Hi, Tim Alden here. We got one of our R6 special spur strap blanks. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna show you the tool of the week. We're going to be basket stamping with our large dot Barry King number two basket stamp. We're gonna show you how we set that up and do it. Um, you can buy these spur strap blanks on the website. We die cut everything so you get a nice uh, spur strap. You may notice that it's got a scar in this one. And so whenever we have any pieces of leather that have imperfections, we're not gonna throw that away. We're not gonna waste it. But we're not gonna send it to you either. We're gonna use those for our YouTube videos. So we just don't feel like wasting leather and we can put it to use here. So this is our R6 special spur strap pattern. This is a pattern that my parents used forever in their shop. We've built, you know, thousands of these spur straps. And uh, so I named it after them, R6 Leather Products. And not only do we sell the spur strap blanks, but you can purchase the PDF download or the plexiglass template in order to uh, just hand cut these yourself. Um, if you like this pattern and you wanna hand cut them or if you want the die cut ones that we can uh, ship out to you and save you some time and effort, um, we got you covered. So I got my border on my easy border tool set at about a quarter of an inch. And I'm gonna stay away from this area up here because I'm gonna make a curved transition. I've just cut out the shape and I cut it down about a quarter of an inch. That way I can roll from my uh, border around that little corner there. So I'm gonna stay back from it a little bit. And the main thing with this easy border tool is keeping it square to your leather. So I'm just gonna tip it back. I'm gonna cut it down here and I keep my whole hand down on the marble. That way I can be as stable as possible. And then I turn it a little bit and I'm gonna turn my spur strap into my knife as well for this rounded corner. And this is pretty much how I run my swivel knife as well. Whenever I'm doing real round corners on scrolls or something like that, a lot of times I'll turn my work into my knife. And you just wanna go nice and slow and work your way around those curves. Go ahead and stop short here. Take my little cardstock pattern. I just cut it down a quarter of an inch from the outline and just rounded that. You can just draw it in with a pencil or something. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and mark this on with a stylus and I'll come back and cut that with a swivel knife. And this is just to keep things consistent from right to left spur strap. Doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to get you there close. So we're gonna use our 3 8 barrel, quarter inch straight blade swivel knife. I like the straight blades, and this is actually a thin blade as well. Um, there's just a lot less drag on the straight blades versus the angle blades. And I just get along better with them. I know some people, they really like the uh, angled blade, but for me, I feel like they dig in a little bit too deep and they don't uh, trail as nicely. So we got our uh, border on there. And so I'm just gonna set this up with a uh, straight line. We're gonna pick a line across here that I can recreate on the other side. I'm just gonna go off this back end here. Just kind of run in parallel with that line. I'm gonna go ahead and mark this in with our stylus. And so this is a really cool basket stamp. And so we got a straight line running across here and then I'm just gonna take my basket stamp. I'm gonna go as far back to the right as I can and I wanna put that basket stamp diagonally across this line. That's gonna set everything up. So I got my 20 ounce small round mall, very king. And so we just wanna seat that down to where we get some good burnish color. We're gonna overlap the back 
leg, and we're gonna keep that front corner on that line once again. And so we're just gonna keep that overlapping that back leg. And then when you get to this end, we're just gonna go ahead and tip it back so we don't run over the border. But that's gonna set up that front corner for the next one. And so if we were to go and move back this way, you run the risk of not lining this angle up perfect. And if you were to mark it there, then the bars of our basket stamp right here might not match up. So we always go back to the beginning and we'll go back as far as we can to the right. We're gonna mark that one. That way we're overlapping both of those bars right there. And if you can see just a little bit of that basket stamp um, from the first line sticking out, if you cover it up, you're likely to stamp inside those bars. So we wanna see a little bit of that sticking out just like that so it falls right in line. So now we're gonna just go back with our second line. We're just overlapping those two bars. And something to think about, if you crowd this crossbar to this side, if you crowd it going this way, it's gonna make the next gap even shorter. So if you're getting off a little bit and they're tightening up, that means you should slide this back a little bit. Preferably, we wanna be right in the center so those bars line up across from each other. But if you're getting off track, that's something that's gonna keep you a little straighter. And go back and mark that top piece. Just gonna get a partial in here. And so here, we're just gonna go back as far as we can. Get partials coming in here until we can get a full stamp. We're gonna even it up. You'll also notice I didn't over wet this leather. If you over wet it, you won't have those nice smooth lines. The wetter you get it, you're gonna get a hard defined line where those shading lines come out because your tool sinks in so much. And if it's a little on the drier side, you want enough moisture that you get that good burnish. But if it's a little bit drier, it's gonna pull that stamp down and it's gonna put tension on that weave coming down that way it's a smoother transition there just gonna get as much as we can there and we're gonna go ahead and turn this around come back the other way go back as far as we can that way we get our angle set up Okay, so we got our basket stamping done, and now we can go through with our beveler. And so whenever I'm carving, I like a lighter maul to run a beveler or doing any of my shading. So I'm gonna go down to my 16 ounce Berry King maul. And I like the number two beveler for any of the curves. And so um, it's just a number two check beveler, roll around any of these curves. And you don't have to bevel this super deep. We just want to get a nice um, channel for our border stamp to come in. And 
And so once we got our curves done, or smaller curves, I'll step up to our number three very keen check beveler. This just makes things go a little faster. Pretty much use it for most straight line borders and long curves. Okay, so now we got our border beveled. I'm gonna go through with my number two pedal with lines border stamp. And since this is a continuous pattern, you can pretty much start anywhere. It's a little tighter in this corner here. It'd be the hardest place to blend things in. So I'm gonna go ahead and start right there. I'm just gonna start kind of there. Roll around. Main thing is, is keeping it from jumping out. So I'll tip it back a little bit and then forward. Just getting that right angle to where it's right up next to that border. Doesn't jump out and it's not inside that border a little bit. And when I approach a corner, I'll just kind of figure out how much room I have. And so there's a, about a half of one sticking out there. And that's why I don't run these super close because I can give myself a little bit more room and it's less noticeable. That way we can, you know, line these out to where they come out fairly even. That one I had to squeak in a little bit. Probably should have given myself a little better gap. But anyway, there we have our basket stamp spur strap. We'll go ahead and finish out the other ones. We'll hit these with some Neat's Foot Oil, a little bit of tan coat, uh, Sheridan Brown Antique, and then a final coat of tan coat, and we'll have a picture for you of the finished product. Well, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next time. Nope. 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 What's up? Nope. I got to zoom the camera back out. Nope. It's not going to work. Not getting away that easy. It's You're re What's that? Yeah, on the back uh, gluing dying bench. Yeah, anytime you're ready. Okay. Well, thanks for stopping by. Hope you like this video, and we'll catch you next time.